Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial we will take a look at a new feature of Stardust and that is volume rendering. It is now possible to render smoke simulations right inside After Effects and we will create this really nice smoky dancing guy here. So let's get started. Okay, so I have already a scene prepared here. And I will just add in a quick ambient light that we can see a little bit better what's going on here. So you see that we have our 3D guy dancing and emitting particles. And this is actually more or less exactly the same setup that I showed in my previous After Effects tutorial. So if you already watched that, then you know how to do this. If you did not watch it, then I would refer to this tutorial where you can learn how to create an animation like this. So it is available on my website and it's this tutorial here, the 3D Dancer tutorial. There you will learn how to create an OBJ sequence or how to use an OBJ sequence into in Stardust, how to import it and how to use it as an emitter. And this is exactly the technique that I use here to create this dancer. The emission of the particles is a little bit different than in the previous tutorial and I will go through this now, because the emission of the particles is very important for the look of our cloud later on. So what do we have here? We have the OBJ sequence here, we have two emitters. So the first emitter, let me turn off this one. Uh, this emitter is creating the particles that are more or less sticking on our figure here, on our 3D character. You see that we are emitting 20,000 particles per second with a little bit of speed and speed randomness. The particles themselves have a lifespan of 1 and a life randomness of 20 and this gives nice variation which is really important for smoke. As you can see it's really cool. And another important thing that both of these particle nodes have an opacity that is controlled over life through this graph here, the over life opacity graph. So both of these have the same opacity graph here. And this is important later on because this controls also the look of our volume. So the second emitter is creating this wave here. These particles are actually controlled by a physical simulation and you also learned this in the previous tutorial. They are controlled by forces. In this case we have a noise that is creating this nice wave that's also very important for the look of our cloud and then we have the directional force that is just blowing them off on the x-axis. And I will just create a quick run preview here now that you can see what these particles are doing because it is actually very essential how your particle animation looks when you turn them into a volume. So you want to have a really cool particle simulation that looks like, like smoky with the movements here so that it will look good later on when we turn it into a volume. And you see this looks really pretty cool. So a very quick word about the lighting here. We have three point lights in here. They are colored and they are a little bit animated as you can see here. And I will now turn off the ambient light again because we do not need this anymore. And now, and we also have one volumetric light. I should mention that as well. So one volumetric light, the V light here, it's this one here that creates this nice a blue volumetric light here. This is our lighting setup and now we will create some awesomeness. We will create volumes inside After Effects. <laughs> really amazing. Okay, so how can we do that? First of all, you need to create a volume node. So let's create a volume node and you have to connect the volume node directly to your particle nodes. So let's just connect both of our particle nodes to our volume because we want to use both of these particles in our volume together. Now you see nothing is happening because we need more nodes. So now we need a model node and we have to connect this model node to our volume node. In the model node we have to change the model source to volume so that uh, Stardust knows that we want to create a volume here. And now everything is gone and this is because we have no material assigned here. So let's create a material and also connect this to our model. And now you see that there is already a little bit of a cloud appearing here. But we have to change the type of the material to volume. And now we have all the settings available that are important to create our volumetric render. Now let's go quickly through the important settings here of these nodes. Inside the volume node, first of all, you have the option to import VDB files. 
In this tutorial, we will not take a look at VDB files. We are creating a volume out of a particle simulation. So you have two options. You can either create a volume out of a particle simulation, or you can also import VDB files into Stardust and into After Effects. It's also very cool. Then you have different actions here. I do not want to get through these now. I just use create because we are creating a volume. You have Boolean operations. We also don't need to spend time on these. We will get right into the stylizing of our volume. And the first and very important setting here is this particle as cloud. Take a look here at this window. When I activate this, it changes dramatically. Now it really looks cool, way better than without this here. So particles cloud is really important for the look because then Stardust creates a cloud-like volume for each particle. Now we can take a look at the voxel size. The voxel size has an influence on the quality or on the resolution of our volume. The higher the voxel size, the less details you have in your volume. So if I turn this up to a very high value, like 20, you will see that now it's very, very fluffy and we lose a lot of detail. If you turn this down to lower values, then you will get back a lot of details, but you will also increase the render time. So in our case, we will just set this to about eight because this is a very good value to work with and it still looks quite nice. Then the next option that is important for us is the smoothing option. So if we set this to a value of five, which is quite high, you will see that this is completely blurred now. Now our volume is a very, very fluffy and smooth cloud and looks not very realistic. But if you set this to a subtle amount like one, this can help to create a realistic render. So let's leave it at one for now and let's take a look at other settings. You have the particle minimum size that just specifies how Stardust or how the volumetric node interprets the particle size. So if I set this, for example, to a very high value of 20, you will see what this does. Now we will get a really huge blob here. Not that what we want, but looks quite funny, quite, quite fluffy actually. But I want to set this to three in our case. And the particle density is quite important. I mentioned before that in our particle nodes, we have this opacity over life. And this opacity over life is actually also controlling the density of these particles. So if we take a look here at the volume node, and we have this particle density. So it says that the particle density is controlled by the opacity. You can also do it with the size, but we did not do it. So if I change it, you see now they are not fading out anymore. They're not fading off here. So we need to change this to opacity and whatever you put in here, you can control then through the over life and this will get to this nice, nice smooth uh, fade out that we have here. Okay, so in the model node, we do not have to do anything here. Everything is set here. Now let's take a look at the material node and in the material node, in this one here, our vol volume material, you can really now tweak the look of this volume. So let's take a look how we can make this look even more interesting and better. The first option is, of course, um, the density here. You can change this by the slider. There's also an input channel, but I think that this is only important if you use a VDB file because VDB files have different channels, tem uh, temperature and density. I think it does not have any influence when you're working with particles. No. I think that's not important. So let's leave it at density. And you can control the density of your smoke, of your cloud, by this amount here. If I set it to a value like 40, for example, then this will get way brighter. And in our case, I think this is quite cool because we have a nice light that is shining through our cloud now. So I will leave it at 40. You can colorize your smoke, the scatter of the light. You can colorize that, and that way you can create nicely colored smoke as well but I will leave it at white because the coloring is done by our colored lights. Let's take a look at the other options. You can also use a gradient to colorize the scattering here. Then the next important value here is the shadow density. So we can lower this maybe a little bit just to demonstrate what it does. And of course, then you see that the shadows get lighter. And if I turn this up a little bit, maybe to 110, let's take a look what this does. Then this gets darker. But the shadow density doesn't only affect the self-shadowing of the volume, it also affects the shadow that is created by the volume on the floor. 
In my case, I want to lower it a little bit so that this is a little bit brighter. I think 80 is a good value here. Shadow darkness, more or less the same. You can increase it, then the shadows will get darker. The shadow areas, this was a little bit too much maybe. The shadow darkness controls the opacity of the shadow only on the volume. So this only controls the darkness of the self-shadowing of the volume. We will leave this at 100 for now. Then the anisotropy, it's the direction of the scattering of the light. And if you increase this, then you will see what this does. And this is pretty cool. And now you see that the light sources here now are really glowy. And this looks also pretty cool. So I think that 75 is too much here, but a value of 40 should do. Let's see. Yeah, now you see that our light is nicely shining through this volume. And if you change this to a very small number, like five, then you see that the scattering looks quite different. So let's put this to 40. I think that this is a really cool look. Yeah, that looks really cool because it creates these slightly, slightly hot spots here from our lights. It looks really good. Then we have the overall brightness where you can, of course, now brighten up this whole thing a little bit. Let's set it to 140, it looks good. And you have the gamma that controls the gamma of the whole thing. So you could make this a little bit darker, add a little bit contrast here. That looks also quite cool, but I will leave that at one for now so that we can see the smoke, so that we can see what we are doing here. The next important value is the absorption amount. And this controls, as the name says, the value how much light is absorbed by our volume. Right now it doesn't absorb that much light. So if we increase this to a higher value, just to see what it does, it gets darker, of course. Let's make it quite extreme, 50. You see now it's a really dense and dark cloud. Also quite cool, but not what we want. So in my case, I just want a very, very subtle absorption and I will just put it to five. This looks really cool because then this, the shadow areas are even a bit darker and we have a little bit more contrast between the lights and the shadow areas and it looks really good. You also have the option to put on an emission so that this volume is emissive, for example, if you want to create fire, but we will not take a look at this in this tutorial, maybe in future tutorials. And this is it. So it's that easy to create a volume metric setup inside Stardust now. So if you want to do a final export, you maybe want to change the voxel size a little bit. So in this case, I would probably go to something like six. Let's take a look how this looks like. Yeah, we get a little bit more detail here. Looks quite nice. I think I like that. And of course, I also can increase my overall quality settings. This has also an influence on the quality of the volume render. I set it to medium because it's fast to work with. And when I do a final export, then I usually set it to very high or even extreme, depending on the scene. I think here, very high is, is good enough. We have no more, we have no more grains here. And on this point, I also want to mention that there is actually a slider that controls the volume quality. You can find it here on the volume render. And here you can lower the rendering quality only for the volume. So let's test this and let's put in here 25 for a moment. And you will see that we get a bit, little bit of noise now here, but this will speed up the volume rendering quite a bit. And volume rendering can be quite heavy on your system. So this is very useful if you have a scene and you want to check out the lighting, everything on a high setting here on the quality settings, but just the volume should be in, in low resolution, then you can specify this here. And then you will get a really, really fast preview of your volume rendering. But for the final export, of course, I want this at 100. And now let's just create a quick RAM preview to see what we have here. So the RAM preview is finished and it took only a couple of minutes and you see that the result is really cool. So I really like it, especially how the volume reacts with the After Effects lights. So I think that this is a really cool feature that the guys at Superluminal produced here. And I'm really looking forward to explore this further. So if you want to learn more about Stardust, then please subscribe to my channel. And you can also visit my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. And there you can find a bunch of Stardust tutorials, but you can also find other After Effects tutorials.
So I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.